Hi, Angie Bowman here again with both my dogs, Gunther and Magnus. And this is just kind of a little mini recap um, of clicker timing. What is the clicker, how to use it? Just kind of a refresh midway through class to kind of clear up any clicker questions. So in class, there was a question about, is the dog understanding what I'm asking for? And with, where this came up was on the scale nose touch. So the dog actually did a nose touch to the palm, but then immediately did eye contact. And so the question is, did the dog understand we're doing nose touch or did they think we're doing eye contact? And the way to communicate to the dog, which one of those two things, because they both were offered, is the correct thing is by the use of the clicker. So if you click at the nose touch, then the dog understands, ah, that's what you want. But if you click at the point of when they looked at you, then the dog says, oh, it's eye contact that you want, okay? So we'll do a nose touch with Magnus and, or maybe Gunther, come here Gunther. And you can see him a little bit better. So watch and listen to when I click. So ideally I click the moment his nose actually makes contact with my hand if I wanted to do, no, to do nose touch. Nose. Good. Nose. Good. Sometimes Magnus can be a little bit lazy and not get his nose all the way to my hand. Nose. Um, in those cases, I wouldn't click because he didn't do the skill at the level that he's at to the uh, criteria that I wanted. Nose. And because we're on camera, he's going to do it perfectly right now. Nose. Good. And in that last example with Gunther, my click was a little bit slow. It's okay because we're doing an easy skill that they know and understand. So it's not super complicated. Um, let me see if I can re reposition a little bit and see if you can actually get Magnus's face. Come here, Magnus. All right, down. And there's um, an exercise that I've been working on with Magnus and it's called Lip Lick. And the cue we use for this is called Yummy. Sorry about that. And um, it's him licking the lips with his tongue. So this one is very precise and really important with a clicker. Let's see if you can do it. Yummy. Good. My clicker timing was a little bit slow on it. It kind of occurred after the lip lick. Let's try it again. Yummy. Good. So the first one, he was a little bit like, is this what you want? Did you notice on that very second one, he gave me that lip lick right when I asked for it. So we've been practicing it. Yummy. Good. So the clicker helps you capture a skill like lip lick. Because in the beginning, I would give him a treat and he would lick his lips. And he's doing it repeatedly right now because he's got some treats on his lips and because it's something we're working on. He's trying to get a treat. Um, but that's exactly how you would teach a skill with a clicker that's more complicated. Like you can't ask a dog, just lick your lips. You've got to wait for the moment that they actually do it and then click. And if you do that enough times, they eventually go, do you mean it's when I do this? And then the cl clicker helped communicate to the dog that yes, it was when I licked my lips. Yummy. And that one was kind of sloppy, so I didn't click it. Yummy. One thing Magnus does is whenever we do this lip lick exercise, and I shouldn't say always, what he frequently does is he does that little head bob and, and tilt. That is the part that I eventually want out of his lip lick behavior. So I don't want to click when he does those little head bobs because I eventually want him to understand I want that lip lick without all that extra head movement. Yummy. And there was head movement on that one. 
it was a little bit less. I mean, it was kind of a lot like the previous ones, but I also, this is a really complicated concept trying to fade out that one. So I've got to take a little wins where I can get them. Yummy. Yummy. Nose. So two in a row didn't work. And that can be frustrating for dogs. So I gave him something that he could do that would work to kind of get his enthusiasm back. Yummy. Yes. And right after that, he gave me a really good one. And that was partly because, okay, it was fun. I didn't have to think so hard. Woo, I can actually do it. Yummy. Good job. So sometimes you have to click and treat when it's not exactly what you want. Sometimes you have to give them a win and it's all very touchy feely and it's part of just training dogs. But I hope that gives you a little bit of an example of fine tuning your clicker mechanics, clicking exactly when they do what you want. The treating, when you give a treat is not as imperative that it is done at exactly the right moment. The clicker timing is the most important thing. If you, um, if you can get good at timing exactly what you want, you're gonna get much better responses from your dog because it's gonna be clearer to them what you want. So when you click, if you get a treat to them within one to three, four seconds, that's good enough. Like they know if you've practiced the habit of whenever you click, even accidentally, they get a treat, they will trust you're going to give that treat. So it's not imperative that that happen quickly. All right, so click or timing, hit exactly what you want. Imagine the lip, lip lick. Treat delivery can be one to four seconds. Um, and I know it's hard. I know there's a lot of things going on. If you don't have the clicker, you can also use a marker word like yes or great. Um, the reason why we use the clicker primarily is that yes word is inconsistent between different people and it can be um, altered by our emotion. If we're a little frustrated, then um, that yes can sound more like punishment and not be as positive as encouraging. The clicker, the sound of the click is devoid of any emotion. So it is always consistent for the dog. The dog doesn't ever feel like, oh gosh, I feel pressure and stress. They just are excited about that click. So yes, will work as a marker word. Um, keep it positive, keep it reinforcing. And then I think one of the other questions that I've had recently is, do we have to use a clicker forever? No. Magnus, can you sit up? Here. Come on, silly boy. All right, let's switch. We'll go to your brother. Come on, nice. Yeah. Yes. All right, Gunther, come here, buddy. All right, Gunther. Come here. All right, right here. Okay, nose. Yes. So Gunther's very good at um, nose touch, right? Nose. Yes. So I can use my yes word instead of my clicker and it still is super reinforcing for him. Nose. I got extra one, yeah. Magnus down. Good boy. Nose. Um, the clicker helps set up a dog to be excited about training. It's kind of a, a it, it, it indicates to the dog that it's a session where they have an opportunity to earn reinforcement, to kind of have some control over their environment. If they do these things, they'll get this. Um, and the clicker really helps hone in on those very specific details. But if you have a very good sit, if you have a very good strong down, nose touch, whatever, you don't have to have a clicker with you. The clicker just kind of helps bring back your in training mode. It can sometimes, if you haven't used one in a while, if you bring it back out, it can help refresh and clean up 
any behaviors that have kind of started to get a little sloppy. But if after training and you have a dog that is giving you behaviors that you're perfectly happy with and they're reliable and life is good, you don't need to use a clicker. Um, I bring out my clicker for demonstrations. I bring out my clicker when I wanna train new skills. I bring out my clicker when something's gotten a little sloppy, but there are weeks that go by that I don't even touch a clicker. So I hope that helps refresh clicker timing, clicker mechanics, when to use them, the details, and when you can fade one out. All right, take care. See you soon. Bye.